All right, here's what we're gonna be using for our test today. You've got uh, 10 karat acid right here and 14 karat acid right here. Uh, I'll show you why we use both of these in just a minute. We also have our gold testing needles, 8K through, I believe 18K. We'll be using the 10K needle to compare to a known good 10 karat gold sample. So there's a little bit of 10 karat gold on here and you use it to compare your acid test samples. And then we have our testing stone right here. And then uh, the piece of jewelry we're gonna test against the needle. To reiterate that the testing acids are not toys. They can burn you. They're not something that you wanna get on your skin. So you wanna use them in well vent ventilated areas and make sure that you avoid getting it on your skin. If you do happen to get it on your skin, wash with cold water as quickly as possible. All right. I have zoomed into the testing stone and actually swapped out for a larger testing stone to make the test easier to view and easier to see the results. So basically first thing you do is you start with your piece that you want to test. You want to figure out what the carrot is. You see the mark. You need to make sure that the mark is telling the truth. You take the, the, the piece and you make a rub on it. Not too much, but just enough to make sure that you can get a good test sample. You're gonna see other tests on this. We, we test a lot. Um, basically, we're doing a lot of testing and this stone gets used and used and used. So you see other old tests, but as long as you know where your good tests are, you're fine. Then you take the, the key. Basically, this we know is 10 karat acid. It's basically your, your control. And then you make a rub the same way. Except this one makes a nasty chalkboard sound. Let's do it. And so there's your two. This is the, the, the mark I just made with the, the ring test. And then this is with the actual test needle for your control. So when you're testing uh, gold in general, the way that we do it is we start basically everything with, 10, with, with 14 karat acid. And the reason is because you're going to go either one of two directions. You're going to go, if it tests positive for 14, you're going to go up to make sure that it's not higher than 14 and that it's uh, basically 18 or 22. Um, and in this case, if we know that we think and we expect it to be 10, we put the acid on them, it's going to dim. The alloy in it isn't strong enough to stand up to the acid. And so that you see just a little bit of the, the mark remaining. You'll see what I mean. When we put the drop on here, we can see that the mark that we made dims. You can still see it, and that's important because if it disappears, that means that it's not gold. Um, but it, since it's still there and just dimmed, that means that it is likely 10 karat. And we'll test the, te the actual test needle control sample as well. And you can see that it, does, it looks basically the same way. Now, you, for validation purposes, you take your 10 karat acid. And this test is, is a weaker acid. We basically expect to see the mark with a drop of water on top of it. And you'll see what I mean. You put the, the, the acid on there and you can see that it basically is unchanged. Um, and that's how you can tell that it's a good 10 karat sample. And on the test needle, the control over here, you can see the same thing when we put the mark or the, the acid on there. It's supposed to look like a drop of water. And so this is a positive test for known good uh, 10 karat gold. And if you do this, you can be confident that what you have is good gold.